Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know how this goes now. This is the video where we go through all the little blibs and blobs of stories that involve data that have been whizzing around the world and we put them all into one big video where we cover them all. We took a week off last week, so I'm covering a couple of stories there from a little bit before then, but without further ado, let's crack on straight into it. First up... Ofcom are investigating a lot of the big cloud providers there in the world. The UK uh, advisory there, a number of us here in the, in the good old blighty have heard of them. And they are effectively looking into and examining whether we have seen any kind of monopoly or unfair market um, share between the big guns. Of course, we are talking about Google, we're talking about Microsoft, and we're talking about Amazon and their market share. And whether they are creating these hyperscalers creating an unfair uh, business environment there because I think it would be pretty fair to say that these three guys are the biggest out there and this is a story that's been wildly circulated in a number of different locations and the nature of this investigation is largely coming down to whether they are playing fair and because this is still a relatively green marketplace in the grand global stage of things whether they are kind of setting their own rules right now and therefore not allowing anyone else into this marketplace and therefore uh, kind of reaching self-governance if you will so to put it into perspective when you look at like at the moment energy companies globally is a big big question something we will be tackling next week we're on the subject of power consumption and nas but in that marketplace, there has to be rules, there has to be separations, there basically has to be a fair state of play where that you don't end up with a scenario where uh, a small handful of companies are largely writing the rules for themselves as they go. And that's how uh, you know investigations like this from Ofcom do come about. This isn't the first time they've investigated up-and-coming new technologies, but it's the first major step forward I've seen outside of data holding laws in Europe and the EU predominantly being investigated on these big kind of cloud storage providers in a kind of really formal way. Now, to put it into perspective, there's that graph there in front of us. This gives you some idea how things have changed in just three to four years in terms of market share and the revenue generated there. I mean, again, we were looking at somewhere in the region of 14 to 15 um, you know, billion dollars there, down there, uh, right there at the beginning, and look at that distinction, look at how much these three companies not only are making, but the lion's share of the entire marketplace. So I think there's a big argument for this investigation, and some might argue, looking at this, that it's taken way longer than it should have. And at the same time, there are multiple reports and surveys flying around, uh, in uh, not just here in the UK either, uh, with big blue chip companies talking about their reliance on cloud and how they're kind of backed into a corner, but also their overall satisfaction with that system. And again, when we go to phone companies, when we go to electricity companies, when you end up in a scenario where a small batch of companies dominate the marketplace, that kind of sets the tone and the rules for the rest of them in how these are conducted and what services you can expect in return. And just so many companies were sort of highlighting, one, the difficulty of exiting or migrating their data from these cloud spheres, but moreover, when their data was in that infrastructure, what they could do with it and the extent to which it could be pushed was severely limited behind paywalls and restrictions and subscription fees. So again, this whole um, investigation is long overdue, in my opinion. Next up, Intel are killing off the Pentium and the Celeron. What? I mean, I don't know about you guys that have been growing up with tech, and I'm willing to bet a decent a whack of you, at least 30-50% of you, started your first road into the world of PCs with a Pentium or a Celeron-based processor there. And now Intel are kind of absorbing that bottom tier of their portfolio under the label Intel Processor. And this is going to be their kind of entry-level x86 64-bit processor moving forward now i say moving forward uh, the most formal new releases into this new tier of their solutions are going to be at the tail end of 2023 um labeled the n200 and the n100 here um, these are an order like n series and again these mark the end of the road for celeron and pentium processor there now on the one hand, one might argue it's better to reshape your portfolio and, you know, get things to be a little bit more mainstream and easier to read. The great thing about the Intel Core series, really, i3, i5, i7, i9, that these are a great deal easier to comprehend generation upon generation. But still, nonetheless, 
the value tier and consolidating two value tier CPUs into one single entry there. Removing the names, of course, but going along the naming strategy there of the N1, N200, it's just not going to be the same anymore. And I know there's a hint of nostalgia, but when you look back to the Pendium and how long it's been knocking around, like the sheer span and how right since the beginning and you go back to the cellar and even further back 1998 no less and also let's be straight to another is there ever going to be a better logo than that Next up, a bit of new release information from the guys at Terramaster. I've not talked about them in a little while. Their brand has finally made AI photo powered recognition, uh, the TerraPhotos application, out of beta. It is now final. It is completely available there. And this is their application for facial recognition, thing recognition, uh, geolocational uh, tracking there as well, using photo uh, metadata in there. And it's a broader scope of things for their platform now. This was one of the applications alongside the surveillance that when TOS 5 was first revealed people were really really excited about it. the fact it was in beta and arguably the early beta was not good in my opinion it was it definitely needed a lot more work it wasn't even halfway cooked when TOS 5 made it out of beta so it's nice to see that they finally rolled this out of course, I will be doing a full review of Terra Photos very, very soon here on the channel. I'm already getting the device set up just off camera. It may beep at some point. But again, I do recommend checking this out. But of course, with the proviso, and again, I'll have to check and double check and confirm this, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to take advantage of Terra Photos, the AI photo recognition tool unless you upgrade to TOS 5 which a lot of users are still on the fence about doing not so much for security reservations but largely because the process from upgrading from TOS 4 to TOS 5 is not as straightforward as you like we've done a whole guide about it do uh, recommend checking that out it's a little bit more finickety to make the jump to this completely new platform for Terra Master there with a lot of improvements uh, on the front and the back end but still I can understand why some users might have their reservations they've upgraded details on their own site there although this page does feel a little bit um wip and alongside this there is a release of a new terra master nas uh, hardware device the f4223 this is a new dual core intel powered nas it's 2.5 gigabit ethernet it's uh, rolling out with the n4500 processor so it's a dual core processor but what's really, really interesting, aside from, you know, the frequency uh, leaping up to 2.9 gigahertz at burst, which is nice, is it's got a very similar graphical handling to that of the JTX 415 and um, the N5105, capping out at 750 megs on board graphical bursts, with those ones just mentioned hitting 800 there. Uh, we've got an article in progress right now over on NAS Compares, which should be flashed out very, very soon, which will detail a lot more information about this uh, more affordable four-bay device. And then hopefully if they get that price point right, this could be another contender from them. And finally, this is a story we would have covered last week had we done Data News of the Week uh, last week. This is that new 80 gigabits per second USB Type-C connection here. Now, at this point, it's still not 100% clear whether this this is going to end up being either A, Thunderbolt 5, or it's going to be USB 4 version 2. Yes, that's what we needed, another USB naming strategy, right? This is a dual lane 40 gigabits per second, so two uh, work through there connection and again a lot of you know i'm surprised how much information we've been given on this early door stuff like this is generally eked out incredibly slowly but not only have we got a lot of official information on this but also we've got some lovely test footage there from dr ian cutress uh, again lots of details there talking a lot more about the test scenario they displayed uh, showing the 80 gigabits per second connection there and the boards that were utilized alongside that there was also kind of details there on that dual 40 gigabits per second connection there so the tall dual laned usb type c connection with the two pathways there working together so again an 80 gigabits per second connection there so again eight gigabytes per second is going to be phenomenal and this is where we start entering that point where PCIe Gen 4 and PCIe Gen 5 SSDs start to really be able to push their weight around. There's a nice article here on Tom's hardware that goes into a little bit more detail about the slides that were shown and 
some of the potential naming convention changes there throughout. And again, when they did talk about USB 4 V2, something we talked about in a previous video as well, which I recommend you check out. But this has been uh, Data News of the Week. Again, it's been a little bit more mainstream this week. There's not been really any silly stories. Hopefully, we'll make up for that next week. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.